hell is that? What in the world? Why does my background look like that? Oh, oh, I'm on the wrong fucking computer. Shit, I can't believe I did that. I'm on the wrong fucking computer. I'm on the wrong computer. I was wondering why my background was looking like that. I'm on the wrong computer, man. Let me see how this going to work, man. Maybe this should have worked. Maybe it won't. Let me see something. Okay, that's better. That's better. Yeah, man. I was on the wrong computer, man. wonder why my background looked like that. I was like, what the fuck? Why does my background look like that? Yeah, man. What's going on, man? How's everybody doing tonight, man? How's everybody doing tonight, man? <laughs> Hit one if you can hear me, man. Hit one if the audio's good, man. How's the audio? How's the video? Cause I just had to switch. I just had to switch, man. Computers, man. I was on the wrong computer. Good, 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 good. One second. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. That's not the smoke detector. That's my um dryer, man. I got clothes in the dryer, man. I don't know why that thing makes that noise. I'm 920. What does 920 mean? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Mm. (laughs) 
Oh, you talking to somebody else. Okay, I thought you were talking to me. Yeah, man. Salute to everybody joining us, man. Have a great show for you guys, man. Um, we're, we're bringing you this these stories, man. What's going on in America, man? It's ugly out here in these streets, man. We may switch over to Rumble, man, at some point, man. Because it's a lot of things I haven't been able to get to, man, that I really want to get to, man. There's so many things that I really want to get to that I haven't been able to get to because I can't show this the stuff over here on um I can't show the stuff. I may do a poll, man. I may do a poll to see if y'all want to go over the rumble, man. At like, what's it, 10? Maybe at like 12, man. Go over the rumble, man. 1230 or something like that, man. Because it's a lot of shit that a brother can't really get to, man. I mean, you know. It is what it is, man. Shout out to Rumble, man. Rumble's great, man. It provides a backup plan, man. Salute to Rumble, though, man. Rumble is great, man. Rumble provides a backup plan, you know? Yeah, Rumble is, there's some shit out there, man, I seen, like, God damn, I'm looking at that shit, I'm like, what the fuck is going on in this country? Everyone's talking about the um <laughs> the um what your face act um the um safety act. Well the safety act's been <laughs> listen, the safety act literally has been going on. The safety act has been going on for a while, man. I mean it's just It's been going on for a while, man. The Safety Act has been going on for a while. We just have been calling it by other names, man. Um, Trying to set this up for y'all. Um, dang, where's. Uh, let's see. How's everybody doing tonight, though, man? How's everybody doing tonight? You said they're updating it in October. They just need to go ahead and get rid of it and stop being so arrogant, man. The politicians need to stop being arrogant. They're going to update it. They're going to update the fucking safety act. They need to just scrap that shit. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck you mean you're going to update it? What does that mean? What 
what does that mean? Updated. We, we, we're too we're too fucking stubborn to 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 say that we messed up. We're too stubborn to say that we messed up. So we're gonna try to we're gonna try to um, just fix it. We're gonna fix it. Don't worry, we'll fix it. We'll tweak it. You gonna tweak the tweak it? Get rid of it. We politicians is too are too um they're too arrogant, man. They're too arrogant, man. Just get rid of it. Oh man, we fucked up. Oh well. Just get rid of it. Salute, salute, man. Um, salute to everybody watching over on Rumble, man. Um, let me get the show started, man. This dude always says, where's the link? And he never comes up. <laughs> Why you keep asking for the link and I'll, you never come up on the panel? Where's the link? Where's the link? And then you never come up. Man, I tell you, man, a um, lot going on. No shit. <laughs> oh, man, salute, man. Salute for that um that article. Y'all sending me some good stuff now, man. Send me this old article, man. Butte, Montana. Listen, let's, let's read this article, man. <laughs> Same stories from today as yesterday, man. Yesteryear, man. So this article is from June 20th, 1866. June 20th, 1866. Okay. June 20th, 1866. How many of y'all are shocked at the same stories? Listen, man, I'm not even going to lie, man. I learned that, man, once slavery was over, black people just started thriving and having businesses, black Hollywood and black, black Wall Street. <laughs> And everything was honky dory. It was like a dream. It was a miracle. These people came out of slavery and they just walking around in suits and top hats. And then the then they welfare came. <laughs> and then in the 60s, welfare came along and they said, hey man, we'll give you a check if you kick your husband out the house, man. And all the women kicked the husband out the house and shit been fucked up since then. The end. That's the story I got. <laughs> I did not know you Negroes was out here f running wild in the 1800s. I had no idea, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a lie, man. It's all a lie. <sighs> all right. So, June 
June 20th, 1866, to lynch murderer ranchers gather. Sheriff declares he will resist to the last. Walter Jackson, who is in jail at Hamilton, charged with the murder of the six-year-old boy known as Buck, is reported in imminent danger of being lynched. The sheriff has barricaded the jail and the crowds talk of cutting the wires to prevent him from communicating with the governor. Hundreds of ranchers around to fury by the nature of Jackson's alleged crime. Aroused to fury by the nature of Jackson's alleged crime. Poured into Stevensville, the boys' home in Hamilton during the day. The jail is heavily guarded and the sheriff has declared he will resist to the last. It is believed that the only thing that has thus far prevented mob violence is the request of the murdered boy's parents that the law be allowed to take its course. Can you believe that? 1866, they got this, these sheriffs and all these um, law enforcement officers protecting this man who killed the six-year-old glider boy from a violent mob. And the glider boy's parents have asked the mob to stand down and let the court system handle the case. Wow. That's not what we've been told. This scenario right here is almost impossible if you um, learned your history through the um, mainstream channels. This is almost impossible. 1866. <laughs> they protecting him from a, a violent mob that surrounded the jail and the um <laughs> and the sheriff said he will fight to the last to defend this guy who killed the little glider boy. Well, you know, we know that like they lying, the, the white people lying on the gliders are lying. The glider is making this up, just having an excuse to kill a son man, man. Gliders framed him, right? <laughs> Hit one if you think this guy really did this crime that he's being accused of. Hit two if you think he's um innocent. One if you think this guy is really guilty. Two if you think that the gliders are just framing him. So they can kill a son, man. See, y'all think he really did it, man. Nobody think he's being framed and set up. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Salute to salute for sending me that article, man. That's a that's a good article, man. Nobody, nobody think he's being set up, man. That's what we were told, man. That every time it was a setup, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I saw this story, John Guy. I'm going to get to this story. If I get a chance to, I'm going to get to that story you just sent me, John. I'm definitely going to get to that one if I get a chance. Yeah, it's, it's too much, man, out here. Um, 
that I can't get to right now on um, YouTube. Mm, let me see. Let me see this one. Let's see this. Make sure y'all um make sure you guys support the channel via PayPal, Cash App, or Super Chat. Let's see what this is, man. Let's see this one. Heard a white dude tell a black dude that almost got the What's the most racist joke you ever heard a white dude tell a black dude that almost got the white dude fucked up? All right, guys, it's just a joke. So a little black boy was helping his mother baking the cake. He decided to be funny. So he poured flour all over himself. He said, look, mama, I'm a little white boy. Smacks the shit out of him. Go tell your daddy what you just did. So he ran upstairs. He said, look, daddy, I'm a little white boy. Smacks the shit out of him. Go tell your grandma what you just said. So he went downstairs. He said, hey, grandma, I'm a, I'm a white boy. Smacks the shit out of him. So he walks back to the kitchen. And then mama said, what did you learn today? He said, I've been white for only five minutes. And I hate you black people already. <laughs> What's the most racist joke you ever heard? Oh, shit. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, man. It's rough out here, man. Um, <laughs> it's crazy out here in these streets, man. Mm, mm, mm. Listen, man. I'm going to need you gliders, man. I'm going to need you gliders to start taking notes, man. Start taking notes from some people, man. We experts at this stuff. Y'all don't know what y'all doing out here, man. Y'all just don't know what y'all are doing out here, man. Okay? Start taking notes, gliders. Because this is bad right here. This is really bad. Look at this glider going in to rob. <laughs> you go to the rob the store. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it is pants falling down. He ran. <laughs> oh my god! Mm, mm, mm. Y'all gliders need to take some class. Y'all need to take some classes, man. <laughs> Look at. Him. He, at that point, he's like, oh, shit. And then he tried to hop. He couldn't get off. <laughs> he just hauled ass. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Listen, man. Leave this stuff to us, man. Leave it to the experts, man. Leave it to us, Gladys. We got it, man. We, we'll take it from here, Gladys, okay? We'll take it from here, man. Just let us let us do what we do best. Y'all need to just sit back. Sit back. Relax. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take this foot up your ass. Take it easy. So in Portland, man, they're having an art festival, man. Portland Art Festival is having an event that's free for black people to attend 
All others are charged eighty dollars for a ticket. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All others, and this, this is not just gliders. All others are charged eighty dollars. All of y'all. Everybody else got to pay. Okay? Everybody else. <laughs> no, that people of color thing went out the window, man. <laughs> Ain't no more people of color, man. It's only free for us, man. I tell you, man. It's getting it's getting bad, man. It's starting to feel like battered women. Y'all starting to feel like you gliders are starting to feel like battered women, man. It's like your friend tell you to lead a relationship. And you like, no, he's gonna change. He told me he was sorry. <laughs> he told you he was sorry. And he only got so mad because he loved me so much. He promised he wasn't going to hit me no more. This is how you glad it's starting to look, man. Portland Art Festival is having an event that's free for black people to attend. All others are charged $80 for a ticket. <laughs> The artist that's going to be there playing is Black Feast and Salamatu Amebebe. <laughs> Think about that, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. Black Feast, I'm trying to see who, who, who that is, man. Black Feast, it's, I don't know, I don't see, it's, all I see is a band from Finland. Oh, okay. Here it goes. So these are the... <laughs> oh, man. Let's see Black Feast, man. Black Feast featuring... So you glad it's got a... <laughs> you glad it's got a pay... You glad it's got to pay eighty dollars, but I get in free, man. You glad it's got to pay eighty dollars for this shit, but I get in free. Let me see what I can get. What? What? what let me see what I. <laughs> let me see what I'm gonna be getting in free for, man. Let's see. It's water and residents at this point. Of, um, to be able to find, just to be able to witness like the beautiful work that you're doing, Salimatu. So, I would love to hand it over to you now to share. This is the this is the the singer for Black Feast, the group that you ladders got to pay eighty bucks for, but I get to get I get to see for free. <laughs> um, with our small community over here, um, yeah. So over to you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you so much. 
And um, yeah, thank you for those kind words. That means a lot. Um, yeah, I am really happy to be here. And I. She's trying to come over like she's so nice and sweet, and she's a fucking ravenous, blood sucking racist. <laughs> These people trip me out. This woman is a is a is a racist through and through. Yeah, listen to her talk. I'm looking forward to sharing a little bit about my work with you all. So I want to talk about Black Feast and some of the origins of that project. And then right now I'm an artist in residence at 2727 California Street in Berkeley, um, which is probably like the most extended artist in residence of all time. I have been here uh, since February of 2020. <laughs> so um, I is artist in residence slash. She's trying to act all nice and sweet. And she's a ravenous racist, man. She's a racist, man. She's racist, racist, man. Golly, man. <laughs> she races, 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 races. <laughs> oh, she's such a sweet person. Yeah, right. You're a whole racist. He said, just imagine the lawsuits. Who going to file a lawsuit? Man, glad I ain't filing no damn lawsuit, man. Let me um send an invite out, man. Yeah. Yeah, support the channel via PayPal, Cash App, or the Super Chat. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is crazy, man. They get to keep you out. They get to. They get to. Um, That's crazy, man. You get to tell gliders, man. Look, man. You, you, you're not invited, man. <laughs> we get to tell gliders blatantly, yo. Like, yo, you can't come, man. But you can pay $80 to come, but it's free for everybody else. That shit is crazy. That is crazy. All right, we got Dark Man up here. What's up, Dark Man? Can you hear me? Yeah, man. What's going on? Can you hear me? Yeah. What's up, Dark Man? I'll uh, I'll send, I'll send you a. Uh... Can you hear me? What's up, Dark Man? Echo, man. I'll, uh, I'll, send, I'll 
man. Yeah, man. Get your get the playback, man. Playback is wicked. What's up, wicked? Yo, what's up, brother? Yo, get this right quick. So the last yesterday, last night, right? The Umbritos took over Chicago, right? Because they saw the Mexican Independence Day, right? Right, I heard that. Yeah. Two people got shot. If I'm not mistaken, it was bad, right? but two people got shot. Today at 2 30 p.m., there was a, a funeral, a son's funeral. Four people got shot. <laughs> but I right, yesterday, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't want to give the umbrellas a pass. It was bad, Jack. But two <laughs> people got shot. <laughs> oh man. It was bad. They right. they said they said this funeral I right, they lit up four people and the and the hearse, they lit it up too. They must have hated, bro. Damn. Let me see something. Mexican Independence Day, man. Right, right. This. Mexican Independence celebrations in full swing across the city. A second night of rolling parties and not rolling traffic. Thanks for joining us at 9. I'm Don Hasbrook. And I'm Tia Ewing. Corey has the night off. A live look over Michigan Avenue right now. And you can see the celebration is in full swing. A little dark out there, but you can also see that the traffic is completely stopped. A non-stop stream of cars and people parading, waving Mexican flags. We have someone out there, Nate Rogers, live in the middle of this scene. Hi, Nate. <laughs> Dawn and Tia, certainly gridlock traffic out here along Michigan Avenue. As you both just described, in the last 30 minutes, we've seen and heard fireworks, and really, I'd say about 20 minutes or so, a band pulled up to this location, drove here, and never. How is the audio? It's the, it's a little choppy, a little bit, but it's not terrible. Oh, shit, I hate that, that it does that, man. That really grinds my gears, man. Mexican independence celebrations in full swing across the city. A Still choppy? No, no. Second night of rolling parties and not rolling traffic. Thanks for joining us at 9. I'm Don Hasbrook. And I'm Tia Ewing. Corey has the night off. A live look over Michigan Avenue right now. And you can see the celebration is in full swing. A little dark out there, but you can also see that the traffic is completely stopped. A non-stop stream of cars and people parading, waving Mexican flags. We have someone out there, Nate Rogers, live in the middle of this scene. Hi, Nate. Dawn and Tia, certainly gridlock traffic out here along Michigan Avenue. As you both just described, in the last 30 minutes, we've seen and heard fireworks, and really, I'd say about 20 minutes or so, a band Pulled up to this location, drove here, and members of the band got all of this. This is their shit. This is the sh this is the channel. This is the channel doing it. A whole lot of Mexican pride just after 7 p.m. Michigan Avenue became flooded with cars and people on foot honoring Mexico. So these people, like, I mean, are you American or are you Mexican, man? I'm offended by this, man. What about you, Wiki? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, Chief. I'd be lying if I didn't say that when I was a, a kid, I wouldn't be out there myself. But in my defense, I'm out there trying to, you know, come up. <laughs> Cars and people on foot honoring Mexican Independence Day. The annual holiday highlights code declaring independence from Spain in 1810. Now, Chicago. So they're, they're celebrating Mexico declaring independence from Spain. What the fuck? But I, I kid you not, I, and I guarantee you, brother. And I could, I could do research for you, but I bet you the, the Polacks, the Irish, that they, they did the same shit when they got here too. I promise you, brother. Yeah, I've been here for a long time though. Nah, but you gotta understand. Like I'm first generation, chief. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A lot of these people, these neighborhoods are, uh, they just got here. But I, 
I'm telling you though, man, I'm surprised not that many people got shot because you gotta understand, Chief, a lot of these dudes are coming to this one spot where the police really can't stop them because it's too many of them. And you have all these degenerates, these kings, these rasters, these days, cobras, they're gonna run into each other. So the fact that from what I understand, only two people got shot, I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good, man. That's good. Um but everybody, you could imagine everybody was pissed, you could imagine, right? Right. I could I could believe that. I mean, but I mean Mexicans are different though. You got, in America. If it was Mexico, it would be like 50 people killed. But in America, <laughs> y'all acting pretty decent. Emily, thanks. A suburban mayor caught in the crossfire during an attempted robbery on the north side. His security detail actually stepped in when they say they witnessed a crime. Natalie Bobke joins us now live with exactly what unfolded. Natalie. Corey and Dawn, right outside the Apple store in Old Town this afternoon, as Harvey Mayor Christopher Clark was stepping into a vehicle, his security detail witnessed an elderly man being robbed at gunpoint. A member of that security detail then drew his weapon and fired, striking the offender's vehicle. The city of Harvey is saying tonight the security detail acted to protect the mayor and that the offender pointed his weapon right at them. The situation shut down a major traffic corridor and shocked onlookers. I'm surprised and my parents just visiting from Bulgaria and it's uh, just like not good experience, you know. My mom is a little <laughs> concerned about it. So Welcome yeah. to America. I'm really disappointed, by the way. <laughs> Something has to be changed, you know, like this is ridiculous pretty, pretty much. Like everyday shooting, just like something has to be done. Luckily, no one was injured. Harvey police are working with Chicago. Smash. Well, um, yeah. I you should you should see Harvey though. I a complete shithole. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it, it didn't used to be like that, man. Um, now when they tore down the projects, that's kind of what fucked Harvey, you know. Yeah. Oh, really? How? Oh, the, the Chicago tore down the project. Yeah, when when Chicago tore down on uh, the Robert Taylor homes, Cabrini Green, and all of that, a lot of those people got sent to the south suburbs, yeah. and well, you know. Yeah. What's up, number one stunner? What's going on, Ark Nation? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just just reading them and weep. You know what I'm saying? It's just <laughs> another day, another, you know what I'm saying, sunny day in America. Yeah. And uh, it's just sad, bro. Heartbreaking, man, really. Yeah. Like the one girl in Baton Rouge, heartbreaking. That one that one hurt me. I'm not going to lie to you. What one in Baton Rouge? Was it you, uh, it's a girl named Allison Rice. She was an LSU student. Yeah, before. yeah, we covered that the other day. Yeah, did they find her? Oh no, well, no, no, no. She was just gone down yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They gone down yesterday. Yeah, we covered that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, we covered that the other day. Baton Rouge. She was a yeah. Baton. They pulled up next to her car like she was uh one of the fucking one of these thugs, and they just from aired her out. Who knows what happened? You know. Wow. Uh, you best believe if parents of kids like this, like this Allison girl down in Baton Rouge, if they just said, we're not sending our kids to these to these sun cities to be at these universities, you best believe there'd be some solutions. There'd be some, there'd be forced solutions if they stop signing up to spend 20, 30, 40 right. day a year. That kind of makes sense, Chief. I, I, I think I agree with that. But I bet this happens in every city. Bet, it does. So, so it's like it, it, it's 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 so it happens. Some men have a way of like getting lost in the trees. Like you can't see the forest for the trees because there's so much of this stuff going on. Um, let's let's warm up, man, and then we're gonna get to the main event. Make sure y'all hit the PayPal Cash App Super Chat, man. Uh, Everything looking hella dry tonight, man. Um, I sent you a super chat via Rumble. Oh, you sent me something on Rumble. Let me go to Rumble, man. Um, yeah. Um, hey, I'm, send, I'm finna send. I'm I'm finna send five dollars and whoever on Cash App and whoever don't match me, you, you know what I'm saying you 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 ain't part of Ark Nation, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Um, salute to Ark Nation, man. Um, sometimes it be like that, man. Did you hear what happened in London last night? Hold on. Salute the dark man. He says. Um, Octa great. Um, what happened? What happened last night? A, a Nigerian queuing up for the, the Queen. To, to, uh, he, he, he indecently assaulted two women. 
and got his thing out. And they, they called the poli police on him. He, he, he threw his phone in the river and jumped in after it. London, you said he, he uh, assaulted the Queen? No, 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 the Queen's dead. Uh, he was, yeah. They were queuing up to see the, you know, uh, lying in state. He, he indecently assaulted two women. Oh, while the Queen was lying in state. Uh, while they're queuing up to see the Queen. Okay. And, and uh, the police came and he threw his phone in the river and jumped in after it. <laughs> Crazy. Oh wow, London! What is it? What um, it was? What, 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 how can I find this? Um, it was um, history debunked has covered it. Okay, okay, okay. You, you, uh, you got to send it to me. Okay. You, 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 you were covering the shooting the other day, were you? In London shooting. Yeah, yeah. Did you? Do you know about the the earlier one? No, no, no. The English riots of twenty eleven. Like, police shot a bloke called Mark Duggan. Uh, I really think they murdered him. Oh, really? Uh, and they caused riots. Oh, wow. Not salute. 2011, that was. Yeah, salute the old school, man. Old school in the building. That's what's uh, up, old school. Yeah, um, salute the number one stunner, man. Um, he says, um, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, man, listen, man. Um, give me a city so we can get this warmed up, man. Then we're going to get to the main event, Houston. His fucking story out of Houston, man. My God, I would normally do a, a pre-recorded video on that, but <clears throat> uh, when I'm on the run, man, y'all know when I'm on the road, man, I've been traveling. I don't have time to do these pre-recorded videos. I'm giving them all to y'all here on Off Nation TV, man. I'm giving y'all everything live, man. I'm getting all the stories live, man. Um, hey, Aquas, can you check see what Louisville's doing these days? Louisville. Yes, it's a oh, it's right. a hot mess, bro. I know Louisville is the is the shit. Um, salute, salute the clumsy glider thieves. <laughs> Don't get it. Down. <laughs> yeah, that glider thief was yeah. He was um, let's yeah. He was he left a lot to be desired, man. He um, <sighs> you gliders are just an embarrassment right now, man. In America, man, I can't even rob a damn T-Mobile with like. Like it's just, it's just, it's just, <laughs> the the gliders should uh they should take advice from us on how to have kids that they seem to have a problem with doing that. Yeah, I mean and how to not kill yourself. Yeah, gliders 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 always gonna kill themselves because they're neurotic. Glider kid, gliders don't seem to be able to make kids that either don't can't understand what gender they are or they all are on some kind of spectrum. Hey, I, but if they if they have an issue with that, I can help them out with that a little bit. Uh oh, uh oh, ain't you married, man? <laughs> yeah. uh -oh. <laughs> that sorry. was a lukewarm response, wasn't it? <laughs> he said, yeah. "All right, Louisville." All right, after a young girl is stabbed in West Louisville, police are trying to figure out how and why. The report of a stabbing came in around 8.15 last night on South 32nd Street in the Parkland neighborhood. That's where police found that girl with a cut in her arm. It didn't appear to be life-threatening, but paramedics took her to Norton Children's Hospital. Police have not yet made any arrests. So if you know anything about this or either of the two shootings we mentioned, just call the anonymous tip line. That's <laughs> we got little girls just walking around with stab wounds. That sounds about, that sounds about black and standing. Yeah, that's... That's that's low. And a woman is dead after rolling her car over with several juveniles inside. It happened just after 10 o'clock Friday night at Third Street Road in Village Park Way. That's in southwest Louisville. Now that's where police found the SUV that had rolled over. Okay, so that's just some normal shit happening anywhere. Car can roll over. Um let's see what else is going on, man. Um let's see what else is going on. A lot of a lot of high school football. Um, oh, here we go. Here we go. Right now at 11, four people are behind bars and police are looking for a fifth person in the murder of a New Albany man at, at the beginning of the month. Our Gladys Bautista has been going through the probable cause documents behind the arrest. She joins us now yes. live from our newsroom. And Gladys, 
Mm. They're shedding more light into not only the motive, but the planning. Yeah, that's right, Rick. Documents say the suspects drove past the home at least one time trying to see who was inside and where cameras were before they broke in on September 1st with the intention of robbing drones. A memorial sits outside this home on Beachwood Avenue in New Albany, a reminder of the life lost here just over two weeks ago. New Albany is a very safe community, and incidents like this are shocking to our community. Floyd County Prosecutor Chris Lane also speaking on the shocking incident when 25-year-old DeJour Drones was found shot in an alley behind his home on September 1st. He looked like a tough guy, white guy. Is He looked like the type of white guy. He might even be like a little teensy bit, have black blood in him. Yeah, he might got a black granddaddy or something. Yeah, but he, but if he's a glider, he looks, he looks like proximal man. Girl, does your drones was found shot in an alley behind his home on September first. I mean, his on name Friday, is a nod to detectives be, after yeah, the arrest of four glider. people and a search for a fifth were announced. While many of you were sleeping, they were up night after night pursuing leads. The leads led detectives to piece together what they believe happened the night drones was killed. Police say Cortland Berry and Zakarion Peters plan to steal money and marijuana from drones, believing Cortland Berry and Zakarion <laughs> and they were coming to steal weed. <laughs> man, if, listen, man, people just do not understand how dangerous selling weed is around Sunday. Man. Around Sunday, man. You selling some weed around some sun, man, you might as well have be selling diamonds, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, literally, man, it is the damnedest thing, man. We kill over weed more than any group in the history of the fucking world, man. It's a damn shame, man, we do that shit, man. We will whack your ass over some fucking weed, man. God. Mm, mm, mm. Salute to um, Mary M. She says, had dinner with friends. None of them knows about all the crime. Mentioned gun memorial eight or ten times. So Mary, um, your friends must be gliders. Um, I'm assuming Mary's friends are gliders. They don't know anything about it. It's weird too, man, when you meet people that have no idea what's going on, man. But it, it's got to be good, man. It's got to be good to live that life. When you that just, blissful life. Yeah, when you just have no idea what's really going on. That's a blessing, man. I mean, I'm not knocking that. That's a, that's literally a blessing. You just don't know what's... Because it hasn't come... Like, the reason I know what's going on is because even if I didn't do this, I just know what type of shit I was on. You know what I'm saying? Even just as a, like, a small time. You know what I'm saying? Little fucking, hey. You know, I know... I have friends, but if you're a glider and you're just not proximal and you grew up in Gliderville and you know what I mean, and you just you watch CNN and MSNBC every night. But I, the thing about that is that when it jumps out at you and it touches you, it hurts. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's like fire. For night, pursuing leads. The leads led detectives to piece together what they believe happened the night drones was killed. Police say Cortland Berry and Zakarion Peters plan to steal money and marijuana from drones, believing he had $20,000 in cash inside the home. Court records even say those involved drove past the house the day before to see who was home and where the cameras were. On September 1st, police say Barry's girlfriend, Hannah Cushing, drove the men, Demetrius Roberts, and a 17-year-old to the house. The men had weapons when they broke in through an open window found Drone sleeping in a room with his girlfriend and started assaulting him while demanding to know where the money and marijuana were. Barry told police that Drones reached for a shotgun under a couch before Peters started shooting. Investigators say the men ended up taking cash and marijuana along with two semi-automatic handguns and jars of change. While police still search for Roberts, the other four people involved now sit behind bars, charged with murder, burglary, and robbery. But Bailey also credits the community with helping them in this case. Many of our leads came from... So, listen, they went to rob this guy for some weed. 
let me show you. Let me just show you this, man, because a lot of people like to, to echo what Mary M just said. A lot of people have zero, like they, they're living in a fucking fog. Um, uh, tell me how the sound is, too. I want you to hear this, man. This this coincides with what Mary was just talking about and, and the story that we just watched. Police have identified three suspects in the shooting death of Joshua Brown. He was a key witness, of course, in the Did murder. Sound trial. good? Yeah, sounds good. Straight. Tiger. Authorities say the men were buying drugs from Brown when he was shot. One man is in custody and they're looking for the other two. Many people suspicious of this, Erica. Yeah, um, I just want to read a text message. So we're all on a group text, all the hosts and some of our bosses. And on Sunday when the story broke, I said to you guys, if they say it was a black guy and street related, I'm calling Sam Cook conspiracy. If people don't start to go down for this BS, BS no one is safe, no one. This is so fishy to me and it's so predictable. I knew this was going to happen. Let's just talk about this. So apparently it was a drug deal gone wrong. We're talking about marijuana, marijuana people. Okay. So you're telling me that three men from Louisiana, they didn't say what part, but from the border to Dallas is a three hour drive. You drove three hours to Dallas where marijuana isn't legal in any capacity, not medicinal, not recreational, but you know where marijuana is legal? Louisiana, yeah. it's medicinally legal, wow. which means that it would have been far easier for yeah. them to go down the street yep. to get this, the weed than to drive to Dallas to go with a man who is high profile at that to purchase marijuana pounds in too. Dallas. Yeah. Oh, and then no, yes, they, found 12 they said they Give found 12 pounds. Yeah. They found $4,000. Right. Do you know I could pick up the phone right now and yeah. probably ha contact more people who could get access to 12 pounds of marijuana uh -huh. than not? Yeah. Because they're who believes that? What do you mean by this? Sister? That is totally ridiculous. Who believes that, man? <laughs> what the hell are you Cause, talking cause about? Because I stole lady? weed for a long time. And the guy who got 12 pounds, it just ain't easy for just anybody to get in contact with them. You can get find a dub, a dime, or eighth, or something like that, or something like you know what I'm saying. Maybe I don't, a zone. Yeah, but if well, you want twelve pound. pounds, you gotta be connected. You gotta be. You gotta be connected. You don't just pick up the phone. They don't think you're the police. They don't what think the you're trying to rob them. Talking about but see, because and this is always this... it's always a fucking conspiracy theories with these fucking sisters, man. It's always but, a conspiracy theory around these motherfuckers, but, man. But if you notice, no one is challenging anything she's saying. Everybody's mm -hmm. head nodding and 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 agreeing. And solely because she's the only uh, sunny person on the panel, her word is law. She's man, the expert on street shit. She's the expert. Yeah, go ahead. She's the expert on street shit. She's she's her being black. And she's a whole cornball, right? She ain't never did nothing, never been around nothing, never seen nothing. But just because she black, they think she's an expert. And her being the only black person, she feels like she's the expert amongst these white people. She internally feels that she knows more about the streets than these white people, which is basically making her a fucking racist to herself, you know? to herself, exactly. I'm willing to bet the chick to the left, to her right, has been with more sun men, <laughs> <laughs> and, and has bought more product from sun men. Yeah, the one in the red dress, exactly. Monday. Listen, yeah. but listen to the listen to how she talks about this, and it gets worse. Drive to Dallas to go with a man who is high profile at that to purchase marijuana twelve pounds in too. Dallas. Yeah. Oh, and then no, yes, they, found 12 they said they Give found twelve pounds. Yeah. They found four thousand dollars. Right? Do you know I could pick up the phone right now and yeah. probably ha contact more people who could get access to twelve pounds of marijuana wow. than not? Yeah. Because there's a reason why it's called weed, people. Because that's how it grows, like weed. Yes. Marijuana is literally everywhere, so no one is being. <laughs> Could have fooled me, man. When I was when I was smoking weed, man, I was always hey, looking for that shit. When it's drought season, my guy, it's drought season. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you can't just pick up the phone and call anybody for any damn thing, let alone 12 pounds. 
She's acting though like you can go outside your house and see like an abandoned house and with, with the overgrown grass and this weed in there. Like she's like, she's literally like acting like it grows on the sidewalks and shit. And this this just goes to show you that she don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Yeah, it's not that it's not like that. It's weed spots in DC. And if you ain't from DC, you will fucking not know where the fucking weed spot is. You'll have to ask. Me not being in DC for a while, I don't smoke anymore, but me me not being here for a while, I wouldn't know where to get a bag of weed from. Cause you know what I'm saying? It's 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 fucking not that easy, man. Now, if you know, you probably know 20 spots you can go get it at. But just a cornball chick like her, she don't know what the fuck getting no fucking 12 pounds at the drop of a dime. Executed like mafioso style. Right. Because yes. marijuana is literally everywhere. So no one is being executed like mafioso style right. because of marijuana. So coinc- <laughs> and, that, and that energy and that intellect and that logic is now the mayor, the police chief, and the judges everywhere you live. DAs, all this shit. And this, oh. and this guy in Louisville literally just got executed <laughs> mafioso style. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I, you did a story on a, on a glider queen who met up with a son man to sell yeah, him. I did that. That was a while. That was a and, couple And what ago. that son man do to that? That's son lady? man. That was in Raleigh. That was in Raleigh, um, North Carolina. He did exactly yeah. what this bitch here saying is fucking ludicrous. But he, he killed her for like. It was like less than an ounce. It was kind of like, it was like fucking like an eighth or something. Bucks. Yeah, like one like year, twelve pounds. Yeah, she met him in like a um a Popeyes um parking lot to make the transaction, and he tried to rob her, and he he said the gun went off by accident. She grabbed the gun and it went off by accident. He was just trying to rob her. He got caught. Right, a, a goldfish swimming with sharks. Yeah, probably pulled yeah. up. Oh, uh, playing two chains. <laughs> you say playing two chains is wicked. Yeah, crazy. man, this is crazy, man. Everywhere, so no one is being executed like mafioso style, right? Because of marijuana. And so coincidentally, right after this trial, after right this after the trial, all over the the evening news, and not only that, but marijuana street value has actually gone down because right, it everywhere. is so right, 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 every- That's not true at all. It's not true. No, that's not no. true. No, hey, not look, this sister would sit here with all of these agreeing idiots <laughs> and still leave this studio and say that all of these people are racist. Exactly. Exactly. She'll she'll try to say, and I was talking and I was trying to tell them, and these white people are looking at me all crazy. Like I didn't know I was talking about. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm every time a black woman speaks, no one wants to listen to a black woman, and there's literally rapt attention. <laughs> They're in, a, they're in a state of rapt attention listening to her and just like nodding and uh-huh, and yes, facts and amen and all yes, that you know, shit. Sister. Yes, you got it. You you should know. <laughs> and she's the she's a whole cornball, man. Everywhere. Right. Everybody's growing it. So I think that when the family asked for an independent investigation, get it. that was paramount yeah. to this entire situation because without it, we don't have anyone to trust. It's like my dad told me when I was a little girl, you will have my respect and I will trust and believe you until you give me a reason not to. And that is going to be a long, high mountain to climb to get that back. And that's the problem with the authorities in Dallas right now. Right. We don't okay. believe you because so it just doesn't ring. The rain. difference between her and the people she thinks she knows <laughs> is that first of all she had a dad so that right there, uh you don't know what what the hell you talking about this secondarily um i see that she's got a wedding ring on i guarantee you that whoever her hubby is would probably prefer to be smashing one of those two stragglers uh on the <laughs> panel with her guarantee it maybe already doing it Who's ready? To, who's ready to? Who's ready to see her husband? It gotta be a glider, dog. Dog, it better not be no fucking glider, man. Who's ready to see her husband? Pull him on up. I know it ain't no glider, man. 
You would be shocked if it was my man. Dog. <laughs> CJ is like CJ is, is is he doesn't have any nerve endings, man. Nothing <laughs> CJ, man. He just he just he just he, he everything he expects everything. This is her. And her. God damn. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there you go. That's her. You know how to look. Hey, man. That's her. Yeah. She uh, know how to find twelve. She know how to find twelve pounds that by a phone call, brother. I knew she was a whole cornball. I'm not saying that being married to a white guy makes you a cornball, but her total package, I knew there was a white. Guy. I just, I mean, I'm not saying that I knew like CJ, but I knew I had an inkling. Like I'm shocked. I'm still shocked, but I had a. I was like, hold on. No, I but guarantee you. Look, I told you the chick sitting on her to her to the left on the screen has been with more sun men than she has. She has probably you did call that though. You did call that early though. I gotta get at you. Yes. Wow. That's just sad, man. <laughs> no, it's uh it's to be expected. And when you come across these people. Uh, out in the world, if they try to challenge you, man, you have to understand that nine times out of ten, this is the background they're coming from, and you got to confront it. Because I guarantee you, my my uh, Mrs. Stunner is is a, is a tiger. She a crouching tiger, and I guarantee you, if I argued with this sister in a setting where her uh, where her glider husband wasn't around, she would check me on that. Even though she rocked like this, yeah, on oh, God she would. It was it was it has to be mandatory that she checks you on that. Damn, this is crazy. This must be her dad giving her away. Wow, she loved that glider too. She loved that boy. <laughs> that glider, she loved that nigga, man. Damn. He, he, listen, she happy, man. Listen, salute to her. She's happy. I, I never want to knock me by for being happy, but tone down the blackity black stuff for me, man. That's what I need you to do. Hey, whenever these people start with all of that they do, I already know what it is, man. Hey, when I was little, there was times I would wake up at night and a roach would be on my damn leg. Okay? So you think this person ever lived that type of Background. I remember taking a um baby oil bottle, right, and putting like tissue in it, and like putting roaches in it, and making like a roach farm out of a baby oil bottle. You know, clear one, <laughs> the baby oil bottle, and some tissue <laughs> and roaches. And um, struggle, brother, struggle. And and listen, man, I'm not trying to sit here and act like, you know, I never touched the light switch that didn't come on. I never um. Um, turned the faucet and water didn't come out, but we had roaches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how it was. And yeah. mice. You know what I'm no. saying? And mice. Yeah. And I don't uh, know. I can't yeah. rock with you on that one. We ain't had mice. No, nah, I had mice, fam. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know what I'm saying? And 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 wearing going to school with uh with hand me down clothes and all that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All of that type of life. Baby I love that life. So cute, aren't they? The little, the little teeny baby roses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, what most, that's what most and the big ass nowadays, though. Like they don't have like them big ass tree roaches, especially not down here in Houston. See, we had cockroaches, and then we had water bugs outside. So when you would go outside, it would be water bugs. If the water bugs wouldn't be in your house, the cockroaches would be in your house. Facts. Them little light brown joints. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Skinny yeah. ones to be moving all fast, yes, sir. But listen, man, this girl's happy, man. She's happy, man. Who thinks that she ever dated a son, man? I think she I, probably did, I, I, yeah, for sure. For sure, look probably. at these pictures, though. She looks, she looks so happy, man. <laughs> I mean, like, she look. Oh, look at the wedding, look at the wedding party, man. There's no where all the black people at the wedding party, it's all black, right? So, that right. means a Wow. She probably went to like a PWI. You know what I'm saying? Like uh she didn't go to no Howard or no shit like that. She went to well, fucking yeah. she went to Ruggers or somewhere. Yeah, Duke or some shit like that. She yeah. happy, happy, happy. A son man couldn't have made her this happy, 
No. <laughs> she wouldn't have been looking how happy she is. She happy. Hey, I guarantee you, he's either he, he's either from a made family or he's on a trajectory to be, you know what I mean, forever financially free. That's why she's happy. Yeah, you dig like ultimately. Well, I that's think why she's happy because she's a glider, man. That's what she wanted. Money don't <laughs> make you happy like this, man. I don't Money. I don't think he a glider. I think that dude from like uh he looked kind of he's still juice a glider, though. He's still he a juice glider. Group. Yeah, he looked yeah, he looked kind of ju juice juicy. He's still a glider though. Ultimately, he's still, right. No, he's still, I mean, if, if 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 think about it, man, he's damn she happy. Yo, <laughs> yo, I'm looking, at some other pictures. yo, I'm looking at some other pictures, man. Like, she happy, happy out here in these streets, man. Um, where all my divestors at, man? <laughs> Listen, man, where all my divestors at, man? She happy, happy out here in these streets, man. She, she ain't just happy. She's his night happy, man. Look at this shit, man. Look at this shit. Um. Let's see the videos, man. She out here. She happy, happy in the streets, man. <laughs> Don't let that the Uma find out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. Wicked. Right on. Yeah, look, look at this. Look at this, though. Like every picture, her nose is touching his nose, man. You can't. Yeah, some man, some man gonna be like, damn, bitch, why you keep touching my nose? <laughs> 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 nah, nah, but no, nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> but no, nah, I'm seriously, man. Yo, she happy, happy in these streets, man. I ain't listen, man. I ain't the type of person, man, to fucking um hey though. If you if you happy like this, <laughs> oh. she, don't, she don't gotta worry about the apps pulling up and letting them go, you know? <laughs> yeah, oh. Don't gotta worry about uh finding 12 pounds or nothing, man. She can't she don't gotta worry about making that phone call, bro. Yeah. Well, she's a too, man. That's crazy. She's a dumb Aquarius, man, but she is. She um. That's crazy. She out here. She out here living her <laughs> best life, man. Wow! Look at she having fun, fun, fun. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, God damn, like she was talking all that, and they they set up the black man who who testified. Because you remember that story she was talking about was the dude who who testified against Admiral Geiger in the uh, Boston Jean case. You remember that CJ? Yeah, I sure do. And, and she yeah, was trying it, to say, like, the, the man had him killed. And shit. Right, right. Like, it was an assassination <laughs> behind that. That, 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 that was with that cop, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the man yeah. killed him and shit. But again, like, she's she obviously doesn't look like she's living under the stress of racism. And she <laughs> signed on. <laughs> wow, she nailed it too. Oppressive. You Thunder. nailed it. He is juice cool, man. That's that's her oppressor, man. That's that Stockholm syndrome, bro. That's all it is. <laughs> he, he is he is juice cool, man. That's wow. what, that's what I thought so, man. That dude look he looked kind of Jewish. I, I this represents the the unholy alliance right here, oh. <laughs> bro. So that bro. means so that means that she had to she had to convert to Judaism. I don't know, man. He like whoopy around this motherfucker. Yeah. Wow, he is Juice Crew, man. Um, Jesse Layman. Wow, she been with this dude. Right. Um, she been with this dude to 2006, man. Damn. Damn. She she talking all this blackly black stuff, man. God, damn, you sisters. Listen, man. Salute she to you sisters, man. <laughs> she be saying what the white man got it out for us. Yeah, he got it out for you, all right. He got it out way out for you. No one, um, no one finds this odd that all of the wokeity woke, blackity black, bipoc intersectionalists are all married <laughs> to gliders who they say are the worst people I'm on the earth. It's Stockholm syndrome, bro. They, they fell in love with their presses, man. Hey, I, you know, you know what I think is so fucking cute though, when uh, when the gliders and the Jews try to differentiate themselves. <laughs> yeah, fact. The same shit. Fact. Now, gliders, yeah. gliders don't try to say that the Jews crew is not them. The Jews crew say they not the gliders. No, the the gliders, no, the, the gliders, gliders definitely separate themselves from the Jews. Gliders. Jews. 
I think the you know the the the, the ists do. But I think I think it's fucking adorable personally. But what do I know? Yeah. Let me let me um let me let me play her her little spill again, man, because it, it it I see it in a different light. Her her, you know what I'm saying? When she now that she's uh, yeah. Now that you did your thing. investigation, and yeah. yeah. We'll play the, the end of it, man. But you know where marijuana is legal? Louisiana. Yeah. It's medicinally legal, wow. which means that it would have been far easier for yeah. them to go down the street yep. to get the, the weed than to drive to Dallas to go with a man who is high profile at that to purchase marijuana pounds in too. Dallas. Yeah. Oh, and then no, yes, they found 12 they pounds. Said they Give found 12 pounds. Yeah. They found $4,000. Right. Do you know I could pick up the phone right now and yeah. probably ha contact more people who could get access to 12 pounds of marijuana wow. than not? <laughs> yeah. Because there's a reason why it's called weed people, because that's how it grows, like weed. Yes. Marijuana is literally everywhere. So no one is being executed like mafioso style right. because of marijuana. And so coincidentally, right after after this trial, after right this after the trial, all over the the evening news, and not only that, notice that man has said nothing. You has actually gone down because right, it everywhere. is so right, 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 everywhere. Right. Right. Everybody's growing it. So I think that when the family asked for an independent investigation, I get it. That was paramount to this entire situation because without it, we don't have anyone to trust. It's like my dad told me when I was a little girl, you will have my respect and I will trust and believe you until you give me a reason not to. And that is gonna be a long, high mountain to climb to get that back. And that's the problem with the authorities in Dallas right now. Right. We don't <clears throat> you because right. it just doesn't ring true. Well said, Erica. Just a girl. <laughs> well said, Erica. You heard what she said though? Did you hear what she said though about like the price of weed mm -hmm. and brand with it? How the fuck would they know? I mean, right? And they didn't source. They're not sourcing shit. How would they they're know? All saying but, shit. Well, here's the thing. It's not about the. It's like, are they going to? Are you going to tell a black woman that she that she's wrong? Yeah, listen. They're making if you videos. Get fired. They're making videos where they're taking pictures, right? And if there's a white woman behind them looking at them, they're like going on, they're uploading it online, like saying that the white woman's like stalking them and shit. Like literally, they're 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 so let's see, let's see a little bit more. I, I didn't mean I didn't plan on talking about her, but she's a very interesting person, man. And I wish her happiness. She looks very happy. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to take no happiness away somebody that is that's happy. response erica to that woman saying don't don't tag don't tag well it's interesting that they pretend like they were there to be a solution to the problem when really they were just escalating the problem she's absolutely right no one is going to have their fingers pointed at them other than black protesters who were there and they absolutely were not there for the memory of george floyd or to support black lives matter do you have a, a quick button on that lindsay do you agree yeah if you're gonna be a <laughs> Only if she knows there were no solutions. Well, that was that was that was BLM's <laughs> first on the ground introduction to Antifa, and we and I actually had that same a friend of mine, not me personally, but a friend of mine had that same experience uh, in the mid state in the Tennessee mid state. Whenever uh, there was BLM protests here, and Antifa was doing that type stuff, and they were telling some people, and "Nah, Erica. just calm down, just relax." I want to see what she says about about BLM, man. Let's see what she got. I mean, about Bill Cosby, man. Let's see what she got to say about the cars, man. I ain't never. I just. I want. To, I just have never seen anybody that happy in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. want, like, no, no bullshit, man. She the happiest person ever met with that glider, man, man. Erica, you know, you shared with us earlier uh, some of your thoughts 
and it became very personal and emotional for you, DBL Nation has been reaching out to you and they were wanting to hear some additional comments from you. How are you doing? I'm I'm okay. Um, I don't I'm not I don't want to make this all about me. When you say me so too. Heavy. You got it. It's just the idea that we have this culture that cultivates rapists. We do nothing about it. We know that it's happening. People cover for it. And then we blame the victims and we find ways of um, making them feel less than as if a victim isn't already feeling like nothing at all. So I really want people to think about the victims today and think about the idea that they could be your mother, your daughter, your sister. And it's not something that anyone should ever have to deal with. Oh, wow. So she's, she's not taking Cosby side. <laughs> wow. I'm shocked by that, man. Salute to her, man. Let me, let me leave this lady alone, man. This lady, this lady, man. man. She's an actor, man. And yeah, man. she's doing all this shit for clout. Yeah, man. And she made that shit about her ultimately. Yeah, exactly. Well, salute to her, man. She happy, happy, man. Like, like she, man. She, she, she make um interracial relationships. She's an advertisement for interracial relationships, man. She make you all find a white girl. Man. Then why don't she take her husband's <laughs> last name then? Well, I mean, like, she don't have to. That's why she's so happy. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. <laughs> you gotta stay independent, man. They were up night after night pursuing leads. The leads led detectives to piece together what they believe happened the night drones was killed. Police say Cortland Berry and Zakarion Peters planned to steal money and marijuana from drones, believing he had $20,000 in cash inside the home. Court records even say those involved drove past the house the day before to see who was home and where the cameras were. On September 1st, police say Barry's girlfriend, Hannah Cushing, drove the men, Demetrius Roberts, and a 17-year-old to the house. The men had weapons when they broke in through an open window, found Drone sleeping in a room with his girlfriend, and started assaulting him while demanding to know where the money and marijuana were. Barry told police that Drones reached for a shotgun under a couch before Peters started shooting. Investigators say the men ended up taking cash and marijuana along with two semi-automatic handguns and jars of change. While police still search for Roberts, the other four people involved now sit behind bars, charged with murder, burglary, and robbery. But Bailey also credits the community with helping them in this case. Many of our leads came from uh, active, involved citizens and I want to commend them for stepping forward with courage to help us identify and prosecute these individuals. The probable cause affidavit names seven witnesses that told detectives about what they saw and gave detectives ring camera footage that showed the suspect car. In his message to Drones' family, Billy says law enforcement is doing what they can to hold those responsible accountable. Nothing can ever replace what you've lost. Our goal. Salute, man. Glad, um, is the, the sun man or the sun glider, the, the smidget of a sun man. <laughs> I don't know what, the, what you want to call it. But, uh, and salute to our dent, man. He says for the replay, man. Salute to our dent for the cash app, man. Um, but yeah, man. Um, wow. Um, here we go. Louisville, man. Who knew Louisville was this dangerous? Hit one if you knew Louisville, Briannaville, a.k.a. Briannaville, was this dangerous. And here's the bars tonight yeah. in Bullitt County after yeah. what police say could have been a violent home invasion. Yeah, it happened early Friday morning in Mount Washington. Our Alex Durham talked to police about what happened and what the homeowner did right. This is really out of the norm for the city of Mount Washington. We don't have uh, no violent crimes, no home invasions. Wow. Is this a suburb? Uh, we don't ever have any, hardly any house breakdowns. No, uh, Ski masks, it's guns, gloves, and drugs found inside this car after an attempted home invasion early Friday morning in Mount Washington. Police say this situation could have ended entirely different. For us, we consider it a win since our one of our community members did the right thing and said engaging with subjects and it could have got seriously hurt. 
18-year-old Elijah Sanders and 19-year-old Christian Ferguson were arrested. Wow. I've been looking for this story for so long, guys. I've been searching for this story. Really? No, a story where it's it's too bad. It's, it's too bad. <laughs> any story. I'm doing any story. With, uh, these okay, other so so this place, all right, because you know I'm a, I'm originally from Kentucky. So this place is about a 35 to 45 minute country road ride from the Lexington or Louisville area, and mm. it's it's where it's one of those areas where where the pharmaceutical companies supposedly dumped all that oxycontin and shit into the water damn could you imagine if they dumped oxycontin in the water in the air of black town oh my god louisville imagine they did this in louisville <laughs> exactly they yeah. yeah. got seriously hurt 18 year old elijah sanders and 19 year old christian ferguson were arrested friday morning for attempting to break into a home on jasper lane Detective Sergeant Jeremy Schmidt said after the pair opened a window that triggered a silent alarm, they moved to the front of the home and rang the doorbell. Police were able to make a fast arrest here on Jasper Lane thanks to the homeowner immediately calling 911. One of the subjects had a, uh, I believe it was a Glock 9mm in his waistband, unholstered, but it was uh, loaded. And there was a 12-gauge shotgun in the back seat in plain view. Police say when they arrived, both suspects were sitting in a car, still masked. After the arrest, officers recovered a wallet stolen from a car across the street. Schmidt says Sanders and Ferguson were under the influence of marijuana and pills and were familiar with the neighborhood. Through our investigation, uh, one of the individuals uh, kind of already knew the house, uh, so it was, it was planned before they went there. Up wow. So those gliders, uh, listen, man, I have not seen that story in so long. A glider, two gliders carjacking somebody, home invasion. So I'm happy, man. That made me happy. That um, that really put a smile on my face. We got a glider because <laughs> you never see it. It's always sunlit. But if you if you check that area more often, you you'll see it more often. He said they don't have that. He, he said it's it. really happen. <laughs> he said it's don't be happening. No, I'm talking <laughs> about not just that particular okay, city, yeah, but that all in the area, right? Okay. Well, I bet it's. Doesn't happen a lot though, but yeah. Um, that sun man right there got another sun man <laughs> right, right back. Right back. The man is now charged in connection to the murder of a couple in Louisville's Russell neighborhood. Maurice Gibson is charged with complicity to murder in court this morning. The judge set bond at half a million dollars. The two victims are 24 year old Alexis McCurry and McCurry's boyfriend, 26 year old Edward Smith. McCurry was shot in an alley at the corner of Cedar and 26th Street Saturday. Alexis Smith McCurry and Edward Smith. That sounds like gliders, man. What do you think? It, uh, it's a close, it's 50, 50, 50. Did he do like a drive-by or something? Like, what was it? It's a like driving double homicide. Like, what? So he shot one. Hold on. Alex is Mick. Don't Let's worry, guys. It. It's we're a clean getting, flip. We're getting to the um, McCurry and what's the, what's the, what's the um, Edward Smith? Oh, that's that's for sure a glider, bro. For sure a glider. Nah, it'd be it'd be it'd be some me Ed Smith's in Kentucky. Alexis McCrary and Edward Smith. Let's see if we can find the pictures of them. Um oh man. Family of mother killed. Oh no, she's a glider. I mean she was a I mean she was a son woman. Um Alexis McCrary was a son woman. Um, wow. Um, and uh, um, I don't. I, I'm Edward Lamont Smith. So yeah, that's a son man too. Oh yeah, 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 Lamont. Um, <laughs> wow. He that that guy killed both of them. Damn, that's crazy, man. Got to stop the black on back. The black on black violence. First right. in connection to the murder of a couple in Louisville's Russell neighborhood. Maurice Gibson is charged with complicity to murder in court this morning. The judge set bond at half a million dollars. The two victims are 24 year old Alexis McCurry and McCurry's boyfriend, 26 year old Edward Smith. McCurry was shot in an alley at the corner of Cedar and 26th Street Saturday. Smith was found nearby outside Club Cedar on 26th Street. Gibson is due back in court later this month. Outside a club. Rhode Island, 24 hours. Outside a club. Oh, my God.
God. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy. That's that may have been a robbery. Did you, you hear what the what the what the what the reporter was about to say? It's been a violent twenty four hours. It's always been a violent twenty four hours. You notice that like, it's never not a violent twenty four hours. Salute to Deluxe two four seven man, the real MVP man, showing up every night man. Uh, that's that's the dude man. Um, let's um, let's let's get to the main event man. Let's get to the main event. Come on down to the hometown, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Come on down to the hometown. <laughs> Rest just a short time ago. Right out six, two arrests in a high profile case. Smash. Good evening. I'm Keith Garvin. Thank you for joining mm -hmm. us. I'm Daniela Guzman on KPRC2 and the KPRC2 Plus live stream. Two men are now in custody in connection with the death of a Precinct 3 deputy constable. Along with that announcement came this bombshell. At the time of the shooting, both of those men were out on bond for prior murder charges. KPRC2. <laughs> Just think about that, man. Two guys out on bond for murder link up and kill an off-duty cop, robbing him, trying to kind of carjack him and shit. But he, he, they didn't know he was a cop. But just think about that. That's how prevalent getting Bond is. You know what I mean? That you could just link up with a dude. He out for murder. You out for murder. It's like like that um Spider-Man meme. It's like, <laughs> it's like that's how fucking crazy it is down there in Houston, man. No, it's 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 for sure. It's, yeah. It's everywhere now, though. Yeah, everywhere Houston, is like this. Houston is, a, is 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 like ground central for this shit. Like they let the motherfuckers out. We won't get into that too. The judge, motherfuckers, yeah. motherfuckers, just walking free out this bitch. Huh? Yeah, I know. Really walking that, free out this bitch. Man. Whew, that is insane. Like these dudes were out for different murders. APRC 2 plus a live stream. Two men are now in custody in connection with the death of a Precinct 3 deputy constable. Along with that announcement came this bombshell. At the time of the shooting, both of those men were out on bond for prior murder charges. KPRC 2's Andy Sirota is live at the Harris County Jail downtown, where both of these suspected killers are being held. Andy. Keith, Daniela, Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez tweeting about the suspect's arrests just a short time ago. And based on what we know about the suspect's criminal history, Andy Kahn, Director of Victim Services for Crime Stoppers, says Deputy Urson's death was utterly preventable. The arrests come one day after Harris County Precinct 3 Deputy Constable Omar Urson was laid to rest. Urson was off duty when he was shot and killed August 28th on his way home after picking up food for his family. Ashim Taylor and Jalen Womack were both out on bond at the time, stemming from separate murder cases. This was a tragedy, yes, but if his bond would have been revoked and remain revoked, more than likely this particular officer with Precinct 3 Officer Urson would be alive today. Taylor was charged with capital murder and tampering with evidence back in June of 2021. He's accused of attempting to rob a man. Authorities say he ended up shooting and killing him. He was given a $200,000 bond, and that was reduced to $75,000 by the judge. God <laughs> damn. Boy. Capital but murder. This wasn't even a safety act, bro. Capital even... murder. We're not talking about first degree murder. Right. We're capital murder. Capital. and they reduced it for no damn reason when they they reduced it when they should have increased it wow that would have been racist done that would have been racist man this is i want to see the judge <laughs> i want to oh, know the judge who did this we won't get into that we won't get into that this is this is insane capital murder that's like fucking you I killed a cop in cold blood or something like this. <sighs> he was given a $200,000 bond, and that was reduced to $75,000 by the judge. A bond violation was filed in court back in January after he failed to appear. Womack was charged in a... <laughs> so he failed to appear. He didn't go... To... Listen, these guys are not coming to court. Why would he come to court on a murder charge that he he knows he they got him dead to rights for? 
then what also why would think about it? He's smarter than them. He's smart enough to not come to court because he know they got me dead to rights. They know they got him dead to rights, and they're still like, "Oh, you can go chill in the streets until we, until trial." <laughs> yeah, man, you just go ahead, go ahead, hang out, man. You good? <laughs> you good. Don't worry about fuck? that. Don't worry about that, man. Here go your ankle monitor, bro. Right? They, they want to take the warrants away. They want to take the warrants, the the bench warrants that are automatically issued when you no show. They want that wiped away. This is this is going. It's getting savage out here. He was given a two hundred thousand dollar bond, and that was reduced to seventy five thousand dollars by the judge. A bond violation was filed in court back in January after he failed to appear. Womack was charged in a January twenty twenty one murder. His bond was set at thirty five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what? He murdered a glider too. Oh my gosh! Well, but did it both? It was both in both in January. Oh no, nah, his, his his that dude was in July. The other dude was in July. At least they attempted to to revoke it. At least they at attempted least raised it. Look, at least they raised it, son. It look. <laughs> but damn, ten percent is seventy five hundred. Yeah, man. But he they can't worth it, son. That's, that's what the safety act for, bro. They can't afford that, bro. Right. Yeah, because, you know, it's poverty, man, and it's not fair. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not fair, man. It's Look systemically. At him. He, people like he can afford that, bro? He can't afford that, bro. Come on, son. Wow. This is insane, man. Um, In December of last year, there was a motion filed to revoke his bond after he had contact with his co-defendant. He was found. So he violated their terms of release. Immediately. And they still was like, uh, we'll just make you bond 75 while you're already out. So basically you owe us the difference. So I guess 35, you got to pay him $4,000 more. Voke his bond after he had contact with his co-defendant. He was found with marijuana and firearms and was remanded into custody, and his bond was raised to $75,000, which he then posted. So you have two defendants on bond for murder and capital murder that are now charged with murder. I wish I could say this was an anomaly. I wish I could say this is unusual, but it's simply par for the course for everything that we're seeing in Harris County. Womack's bond conditions included wearing a GPS device. He also had a curfew and was supposed to provide a work schedule to pretrial services weekly. Live downtown tonight, Andy. Sur this shit is, I mean, it's, it's a joke. It's, it's literally a joke. You can't make this shit up. It, it almost feels like we're dreaming. Like I, a lot of people criminals oh geez y'all picked the wrong time to be a criminal man like this is the best now to a developing story best we've been following ever. for you the shooting death of a harris county precinct three deputy constable there are two men in custody both of who were out of on bond for previous murder charges when deputy omar urson was killed today a judge set new bond amounts for both suspects kprc2 sion Rhodes live downtown now with that update sion Keith, these new bonds are for old cases, and prosecutors hope that the amounts will keep these two men behind bars. The suspects accused in the shooting death of Deputy Omar Urson in court Monday morning, where Harris County prosecutors asked the judge to revoke their bonds on two separate previous murder cases. These individuals should not be released again out into society until they have their day in court. The judge reset Asim Taylor Jr.'s bond for charges connected to a June 2021 murder to $3 million and up Jalen Womack's bond in a January 2021 murder charge to $2 million. I don't think my client did commit a crime, did expect any crime to be committed. Defense attorney Connie Williams is representing Womack in both cases. I think this is something that happened on the spur of a moment that happened involving another. Both murders happened on the spur of a moment. <laughs> yeah, He's just yeah. the most unlucky dude in the world. Every yes. time he goes around this, somebody gets killed somebody and he just gets killed. 
but plus, look, somebody had to get killed. A, a, a man had to lose his life before the system actually gave them appropriate bonds. Two million and three million. That's what it said. Right? But they should have had no bond. It should have just been yeah, remained in jail. Yeah, why give them a bond? Like, why exactly? Did, it just doesn't even make sense. It just doesn't. It doesn't. You, you're still giving him a bond. You're yeah, like. Him. Goddamn, what they family members could put a house up with all this shit, right? Houses, yeah, fucking, yeah, they could do that. All this shit, man. And obviously, there's people that's willing to fucking keep paying that shit. The shit's thick, bro. Yeah, shit is thickening, bro. It's clicking. No, it's sickening. sickening. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the shit's sickening for real. Wow. So, um, that shit is. Yo, that shit is fucking insane, man. That it's like it's like they're playing with these guys. It's like literally, all right, now your bond's one million dollars. Like he doesn't listen, man. The backlash, and I, like I said, I, I don't think it's like right around the corner. I don't think it's right around the corner, but god damn it, when it comes, it's gonna be fucking bad, man. It's gonna be bad because this shit is like they're literally going to force some men to just start running around shooting people because some men we don't have no impulse control we can't control ourselves so like the more rope y'all give us we're going to keep pushing it to the limit so like the next thing the next place we take this especially after the safety act we're going to take this somewhere crazy, my G. Okay? <laughs> we are going to take this somewhere crazy. You ne- I, I, Listen, you just don't know where we're going to take this, man. Another person who may have been in the car and why that happened, I have no idea. At least not yet. Prosecutors say Womack and Taylor were wearing court-ordered ankle GPS monitors that placed them at the location where Deputy Earth... They were wearing their ankle monitors that placed them at the location of the murder. So think about that. They're out on bond for murders. They commit another murder while they have their ankle monitors on. So there's no doubt that it was them. But you put them at the scene with the ankle monitors. There's no doubt that it was them. No bond, throw them in a cell and feed them gruel three times a day. Instead, these motherfuckers are in the day room in somebody's jail playing dominoes and watching fucking Gilligan's Island. (laughs) No, they probably on Instagram and shit. Motherfuckers got TikTok and shit in that motherfucker, bro. Right. With a bond, with the ability to get out. If yeah. somebody dumb enough to pay, right. somebody raised it, right? Of the ankle monitor. It's fucking insane, man. Killed a glider and a cop. Right. This one did, the one on the left. He killed a glider and a cop. And it's like, you're not supposed to be able to do that, right? You're not supposed to be able to do that. You're supposed to, like, you, you, you kill a, a glider. Your life's supposed to be over, man. It's, you're done, man. How are they even still alive after having been arrested previously? You know what I mean? According right. to exactly. according to the wokesters. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Every black interaction, it is in, is in violence. Let me show you why. accused of killing a Harris County Let me show County you why they, why, they may, will likely be st- why they may have gotten out on bond. This shit is crazy right here. Salute to everybody um, watching on Rumble. Make sure you hit the PayPal Cash App Super Chat. Support the channel. Um, all these videos are demonetized. We don't make nothing from YouTube. Support the channel via PayPal Cash App Super Chat. Let's get some new donors in the building, man. Some people that never, ever hit that Cash App, hit that PayPal, hit that Super Chat. Some new people, man. Make sure you hit that today, man. Make tonight your first night. The man accused of killing a Harris County Precinct 3 deputy constable will likely be staying behind bars. 20-year-old Ashim Taylor and 20-year-old Jalen Womack were both in court today. Both waived their rights to future bond hearings. The two men are charged with murder and the death of Deputy Omar Urson. He was off duty and driving to a... He was he happy too, man. It's just... <laughs> All right. 
man. Hey, man. Oh. He, got, he got his little glider queen, man. His little beige baby, man. I he feel living the life. But the little sun glider baby, man. I feel hey. <laughs> yeah, man. Death of Deputy Omar Urson. He was off duty and driving to Atascacita last month when he was shot and killed. Now, police say those two men, Womack and Taylor, were out on bond when they killed Deputy Urson. And we know tonight at least one of them got the money from a local bonding company tied to a controversial family. The Harris County Bell Bond Board ruled today that one of the brothers in that family now has to close up shop. Fox 26's Randy Wallace live tonight to explain more. Randy. Yeah, that's right, Jonathan. The Mahara family has posted bonds for several accused killers and high-profile cases. They include the recent slaying of off-duty Deputy Constable Omar Urson. And if they're required to pay 10%, then they have to pay that. Bail bondsman Wassam Maharbid posted bond for Jalen Womack, who is now charged in the murder of off-duty Deputy Constable Omar Urson. The Maharib family has been accused of taking less than 10% of the bond amount for defendants and putting them on payment plans. You hear that? Yeah. Extending so, them credit. Yeah, but that's not the spirit of bond. You already get, only have to pay 10%. So they took 10% of the 10% is what you exactly. think? Exactly. Right. 10% wow. of the 10% and put them on a payment plan. So if that guy had a, what did he have? He had a $75,000 bond. Yeah. He had to pay um, 7500 7, So he, he got out for $750. And the guy just put him on a payment plan. So now with this $2 million bond he has, with the $2 million bond this, this um, teen has now, that's $200,000. 10% of that is 20000 That's how these guys are getting out when they got these bonds. Shit like this. And don't tell me this is the only guy doing this. The only bail bonds been doing it. Impossible. Shit is crazy. Sun man whining about America and how bad he got it. I'm telling y'all right now, don't believe the sun man. The sun man is walking on sunshine. Okay, he's walking on sunshine. Every door is open to him. Every loophole is available for him. Wow. Family has been accused of taking less than 10% of the bond amount for defendants and putting them on payment plans. Even after several crime victims and advocates spoke against renewing Wasam Maharib's license, the Harris County Bail Bond Board did the opposite. The board, again, had an opportunity to send a message out, and they didn't do that. And only time will tell how many other people will perhaps end up being in the same predicament as Deputy Urson and his family are. This board that is supposed to regulate the bonding companies is not doing their job. If you don't want this type of job, if you don't want to make the tough decisions, don't be here. I'm absolutely devastated that they did not take into effect the points that we brought up and allowed him to get another license. And they allowed this person to get an additional license to continue to operate in our community when they've demonstrated over and over again, they're unable to, to hold up their end of the bargain when it comes to uh, the bail bond system. Our, our powers are limited. Uh, if I were to vote against that license and it were to get um, denied, there's obviously litigation that's going to cost the county money and there's going to be an injunction that may be imposed, which means they still get to keep their license while the litigation is pending. The bail bond board voted to not renew Anthony Maharbid's bail bonding license, partly for not paying judgments within 30 days. We're not going into the prisons and taking people out. We are allowing people who have only been charged with an offense to have a certain amount of freedom until, if and when, uh, if they're convicted. Never trust the black man with a bow tie. Never. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Never. Salute to um, um, Brian. Brian C. He says, every glider listening, check out. You will not have to put that in the um, in the chat. Um, Brian, whatever you sent me, you're going to have to put it in the chat. He says, ah, keep up the good work. It's nice to hear sun men who have the right idea. Now, the Harvard brothers have a sister, Sheba. She surrendered 
her bail bonding license. Her company, Able Bonds, was raided last June by the Texas Anti-Gang <laughs> Task Force. Did you hear that? The sister, this guy's sister, has her Man. own bail bonding company. Until, if and when, uh, if they're convicted. Now, the Mohammed brothers have a sister, Sheba. She surrendered her bail bonding license. Her company, Able Bonds, was raided last June by the Texas Anti-Gang Task Force. Reporting live from the <laughs> Southwest Side. And I'm sure they pulled her name out of a hat because she was black, right? Just right, out right. just fell out the sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Some people, like, whenever they get positions, man, it's always like always this shit man it never stops with this shit never stops um let me show you the judge who, who, who's in choosing um um i don't know if anybody i'm not I, I don't know if it's like on the news out here uh but they had a uh alleged school shooting almost happened at uh two high schools out here too Oh really? Over like the past couple of days, it was like a, a a dude was going to shoot up a. He had posted on Snapchat or Instagram or one of them that he was going to shoot up a high tower high school out here. Wow. Okay. They called him. They called the dude though before anything happened though. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, we may get into that. Um, let me um, let me find this. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me find this one. This judge, this judge is insane with it. What we got here, Gavin. Gavin Texador. What's up, Gavin Texador? Hey, what's up, man? It's kind of corny. They use my real name and I can't change it. But hey, uh, I've been on here before, though. I was a uh, uh, Philly versus everybody. Oh, OK. What's up, man? How's it going? What's up? Hey, uh, hopefully I ain't got a crazy like echo on my join nah, this time. Salute no to worry. Erica, man. Salute to Erica with the $10, um, the $10 cash app, man. Salute to you, Erica. Um, yeah, Erica. Erica is... Um, it's, 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 it's kind of cute, y'all guys in the chat, man. I'm gonna want to holler at Erica, man. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, listen, um, yeah, Philadelphia. So you from the Philadelphia, man? Yeah. Yup. I'll be in the mix. Yeah, you already we already know what time it is. So this is the judge. <laughs> this is the judge right here in Houston that um, presided over these guys' bail. Night, K two eleven oh. investigates taking a yeah, close. Yeah, um, unmute this shit. What the hell? Is it? Is it muted? So look at the record. Yeah. Hey. Uh, playing? Not, it's playing. It's playing. I can't hear it. Okay, I can't hear it. All right. Shit. I can't fucking hear it. Um. Ain't that a bitch? Um. As I gotta be able to hear this. Hold on. All right, I got it. I got it right here. I'll just do it on YouTube, man. Um. Now to a developing story that has a local judge under a microscope tonight. He's facing backlash after two Houston police officers were shot. One of them was killed. Critics believe that Judge Greg Glass failed when making decisions regarding bond in the case of Dion Ledet. The man some more niggas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like here we go. Is, is they always get out and kill cops. Them was killed. Critics believe that Judge Greg Glass failed when making decisions regarding bond in the case of Dion Ledet, the man who fired those shots at the officers. KPRC 2's Courtney Zabowski is live at the Harris County Courthouse tonight. And Courtney, you found Judge Glass presiding over a case just today. 
Yeah, that's right, Dominique. A lot of people want to speak with Judge Glass, including us. We called him on the phone. He didn't pick up, so we went to his courtroom. We found Judge Greg Glass today on the 17th floor of the Harris County Courthouse, presiding over a murder trial. We asked the bailiff if we could speak with him, but all she said was, the judge asked me to tell you he doesn't believe it's right for judges to talk about cases. He needs to be out in the in the forefront explaining himself as to why he did what he did. Officer Doug Griffith is the president of the Houston Police Officers Union. He needs to have the integrity to step down. Griffith believes Officer William Bill Jeffrey would be alive today if Judge Glass hadn't given habitual offender Dion. Whoa. Not only <laughs> <laughs> whoa, yeah, whoa, central casting, man. That's straight out of central casting. That brother, <laughs> yeah. no, nah, he cool, he'd be all right, man. After <laughs> Dion Ledette, not only a bond, but also a low one at that. Ledet is accused of killing <laughs> Officer Jeffrey and seriously injuring Sergeant Michael Vance in a shootout Monday morning. Ledette was also shot and killed. We all have a role to play, um, but judges do have to be mindful of those that are coming before them each and every day. You can't ignore what's happening out here in the real world. How, how do they feel about this bear down there in Houston? Boy, they fucking hate Sylvester Turner down here, dog. They hate his guts, bro. He worse. I think he's worse than Franklin the Turtle up there in Chicago, man. <laughs> was happening out here in the real world. Ledette has a criminal record that dates back to 08. One conviction includes aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. His latest charge was a drug charge. The DA's office asked for no bond, but Judge Glass set bond at $40,000. KPR's- Oh, <laughs> What? <laughs> so if you were to get ridiculous, man, he's an old wokester. Yeah. Yeah, if he was to get with that Bell Bonds company, that uh, Muhammad Bell Bondsman, he would have to pay. What's four hundred? It's four hundred, I think. Yeah, be four hundred bucks to get out. Thousand dollars. KPRC two legal analyst Brian Weiss says, "Don't be so quick to judge." The fact that he made a judgment call that that ultimately resulted in in horrible, horrible consequences is one that should not characterize the motion picture of his judicial career. We apologize. And we did get an update on the condition of Sergeant Vance. He is in critical. And that yeah. guy was the subject matter expert they presented. Yeah. Who said, give him a chance. Hey, bro, you breathe heavy shit, man. Um, Philly, it's taking you, a you closer look. You breathing like, KG um, and invest you breathing like me on my um, CPAP, man. <laughs> That's because I'm smoking. It's... Yeah, you got to mute yourself, man. Oh, my fault. Tonight, KG11 investigates taking a closer look at the record of Harris County Judge man. Greg Glass. He is the judge who let career criminal Dion Ledette out on bond last year. And while free, Ledette shot and killed a Houston police officer. Investigative reporter Jeremy Rogowski found Glass has a history of not keeping habitual offenders in jail. Repeat offenders of all kinds have come before Judge Greg Glass, drug dealers, felons with weapons, and domestic abusers. Prosecutors repeatedly try to keep them in custody, records show, with motion after motion to deny bail. But the Honorable Glass routinely denies those attempts, setting bond in their cases, and paving the way to get back on the streets. You keep letting them out. You keep spitting them out to reoffend. Andy Kahn is a victim's advocate with Crime Stoppers. I called the Harris County bond pandemic, and people have paid the price. The girlfriend of Jorge Garivaldi paid the price, not once or twice, but three times. First, he allegedly kicked her in the head and face, then charged with stabbing her with a screwdriver. Judge Glass lowered his bonds in those cases, and Garivaldi was released to allegedly... $15,000. <laughs> bro, this is sickening, bro. So that's if he gets with the bail bond, the Muhammad bonds, then he got to pay one hundred fifty thousand. You know, <laughs> right? Jesus Christ. In those cases, and Garibaldi was released to allegedly assault the same woman again. To me, the defendants are ticking time bomb. Khan says a long leash often leads to something worse. 
when you continually release defendants time and time again, you're giving them a license to kill. One week ago, Houston police buried one of their own, veteran officer Bill Jeffrey, gunned down while serving a warrant by a man out on bond because Judge Glass didn't side with prosecutor attempts to keep him in jail. Salute to my man Willie, man. Willie over on um, Rumble. And I guess we are going to Rumble. Let me see what the um, poll said. Yeah, we're going over to Rumble in 30 minutes, man. Salute to Willie, though, man. Willie always shows up on Rumble with the um, with the um, Super Chats over there on Rumble. They call him. What do they call him over there on Rumble? Um, they call that shit over there on Rumble? Um, money bags or some shit? But, yeah, salute, salute to him, man, um, for the $10 um, Super Chat over there on Rumble. I want to know where Judge Glass is. Why has he not responded to any kind of messages from anyone? He needs to answer up for this. Judge Glass gave us no answers either after we called him on his record. Dozens of cases where he turned down prosecutor pleas to keep violent criminals in jail. Yo, remember how I tell y'all? One of these guys is more dangerous than any thug. A thug can't can only do the crime that's in front of him. You know what I mean? This guy, he's he can free dozens and dozens of these niggas, and he's on burritos. These guys, he's far more dangerous. This guy is this right guy right here is dangerous. Us no answers either. After we called him on his record, dozens of cases where he turned down prosecutor pleas to keep violent criminals in jail. There's Damarian Gully, who was granted bond after separate aggravated assault, ag assault with a deadly weapon, and murder charges. There's Jarvis Williams, four separate charges, four motions to deny bail, four separate bonds. And there's James Carroll, a five-time recipient of Judge Glass's bonds. This is something we're seeing. So, listen, man, is racist. Can we, can we can we slap the shit out of the next glider, pasty liberal that fucking says something about racism, man? Like, what the fuck? Racism? The, the biased criminal justice system? You fucking kidding me? These some men are fucking walking on candy covered, pay candy paved streets through the fucking criminal justice system, man. This shit is like a fucking joke. And everybody, make sure you um, make sure you um, sign up for Rumble because we're going over to Rumble at twelve thirty, man. Because I got some shit to show y'all that I can only show y'all on Rumble. So everybody, make sure you get your um, make sure you get your Rumble account because you won't be able to comment unless you sign up for Rumble. I don't think you'll be able to comment. Ag assault with a deadly weapon and murder charges. There's Jarvis Williams, four separate charges, four motions to deny bail, four separate bonds. And there's James Carroll, a five time recipient of Judge Glass's bonds. This is something we're seeing with many district court judges, not just Judge Greg Glass. KGU 11 legal analyst Carmen Rowe. And make no mistake, this is something we've never seen in Harris County before. So it's, it's never been this way. And it's never been this bad. It all ramped up, Rose says, after the 2018 election sweep by Democrat judges. When it comes to the revolving door of felony bonds, Rose says the elephant in the courtroom is politics. Democrats. At least they identified it as Democrats. My God. It's a dangerous dude, man. Sure. That's a dangerous dude, man. Yikes. Hey, but, uh, yo, I, I did want to say something real quick. I mean, I was going to hop off, though. But, uh, honestly, I, uh, uh, well, since since we talking about all this bail reform stuff, uh, like, I've had, like, warrants for the past nine years because, uh, you know, the course was some assholes to me. And, uh, you know, they uh, kept me in jail for, for all my court dates until my last one. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, people don't they don't talk about this. You know what I'm saying? But the state can can bond you out. You know what I'm saying? The state states bond people out all the time. And, uh, you know, like if you're not like a flight risk or whatever, you know, you don't have priors. They, they release you. Well, they released me before my last court date. And because I never got charged, it's been like nine years. 
and I'm like across the country. You know what I'm saying? I can't do shit about them. They won't extradite me or whatever. But like every time I get fucking stopped, they run my name and shit. Well, when I'm not in Philly or whatever, they run my name and they, you know, they'll put me in cuffs or whatever. They'll sit me on the ground, all that shit, all because they fucking, you know, I was actually trying to take care of my shit. And you know what I'm saying? They released me before my last court date. And I was like homeless and I couldn't fucking make it to <laughs> any court dates after that. So it's funny how they just, you know, up and releasing everybody now. You know what I'm saying? But like if you actually try to take care of the shit, they'll just set you up to where you can't actually take care of it. Wow, that's tough, man. Um, that's a that's a tough break, man. But I would let you go through that to keep 90% of the other bad guys in jail. So oh, absolutely. is is a small percentage of these guys liberals would look at your case and say change the whole system because of what happened to you exactly <laughs> you know what but honestly honestly if they had just I, I wish they would have kept my ass in jail and then after that they wouldn't because they were misdemeanor charges they wouldn't extradite me a county over you know what I'm saying? Where I was mm -hmm. because they're fucking dicks. They're a bunch of fucking dicks. I wish they would have took me to fuck the jail before I moved across the country. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't mm -hmm. be dealing with this shit now. You know what I'm saying? But then it's like turn around. It's like the only person that that shit helps is the guy that's not coming back to court and going to their court date, honestly. So exactly. it's 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 retarded. Like all you're doing is hobbling these guys. The dude that did just get a traffic ticket, you know, he has a couple traffic tickets. Well, guess what? He not go going back to fucking court. Now he has bail jumping and shit. They're going to go fucking grab his ass. He got a warrant. But right. anyway, that that, that was kind of, you know, the little two cents I wanted to interject. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm crazy dude, white guy in Philly. You know what I'm saying? Fucking I'm a transplant here. I came here willingly. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> Yo, man, when you're homeless everywhere, man, fucking, you you got you got to make something work. Wow, all right, man, check back in, man. Salute to you, man. Peace out. Hey, definitely, man. Hey, love your content, man. I be trying to put put uh uh people out here. You know what I'm saying onto your joints. You know what I'm saying, especially because everybody just sweep the shit under the rug, man. But hey, God bless y'all, man, and uh, peace to you, out. Peace out, man. All right. Man, that's a deep voice glider, man. That's a glider with a deep voice. Let's do one more. Um, let's do one more city before we head over to Rumble, man. Give me a city, guys. You checked New Orleans? We did New Orleans last night. Last night, right? Okay. Yo, I'm out. Good night, everybody. Okay, see you later, CJ, okay. man. Take it easy, man. The link is in the description box. If you want to come up, um, if you, if you want to come up and join us, join the panel, um, the link is in the description box. Make sure you hit the PayPal cash app, the super chat, support the channel. We do one more city before heading over to, um, Des Moines. All right. Des Moines. Sounds like Des Moines is, is on the radar, man. Des Moines. Moin is, is, is all that means is the monks, the monks in French. The Moin. Let's see what's going on in. Let's see what's going on in the Moin, Iowa. I was. Getting very sunny over the years, man. Very, very, very sunny, man. Over the years. Thanks. With a man charged with killing Michael Valentine at the Taboo nightclub and lounge in Cedar Rapids back in April has pled not guilty. Dimion Walker was booked into the Lynn County Jail on September 2nd, nearly four months after the deadly shooting that left three people dead and nine others injured. Now, Walker is facing a charge of first degree murder as well as weapons charges. Wow, they shooting up the club in fucking Des Moines. 
You know your town's in danger when you see the strangest kid come home from doing a bid, nothing changes. They didn't give like a race on a suspect or nothing like that? They don't need to. Not in the morning. <laughs> Not in the morning. This morning, we do have an update on the stabbing that happened over the weekend at third in court. Police confirm they have one person in custody, 25-year-old Terian Jabari Mack. Maxfield. Now, Maxfield has been charged with attempted murder and felon in possession of a firearm. Des Moines police are also looking for a second suspect. If you can take a moment, look at your TV screen. If you have any information on where the suspect may be, you can call Des Moines Crime Stoppers. I told you, in Des Moines, there's always a son, man, man. And that's Iowa. They have fucking ruined Iowa. And it ain't but a smidget of them over there. Like, I don't know. I think it's like, I don't even know. I think it's under 6%. It might not even be 6 But they are, they are doing big things out there. You hear me? Yeah, man. It's going, it's going crazy, brother. What about OKC? Have you tried OKC? Okay, let me. Let me um see something right quick. Uh oh my god. We do have breaking news just moments ago. The sentencing for terror flip is complete. A judge sentenced flipping to two years probation for hitting and killing Emma Cardina with her car earlier this year and driving. <laughs> Listen, man. I don't want to hear nothing about racism. And well, the criminal just we need criminal justice reform. Listen, if you keep if they reform the sin, the criminal justice system anymore, if not they might not even need it. There ain't gonna be no criminal justice system. Sisters is getting two years probation for mowing down fucking on burritos and leaving the scene. What the fuck? What has the world come to, brother? What the fuck has the world come to? Judge sentence looking to two years man. probation for hitting and killing Emma Cardenas with her car earlier this year and driving away. Slipping is also forced to pay a fine of more than $1,200. The death <sighs> of Emma has changed the speed limit and pedestrians. Wow, look at that bright, bright, bushy tailed Umbrita, man. Mm, mm, mm. So, so basically, her life was just worth $1,200. But <laughs> like, that's technically what they're saying. <laughs> like, what the fuck? She left the scene. It's not like she hit her. And was like, all right, well, okay. I hit her. We called an ambulance. Yeah. None she, of that shit. She hit her and they had to go fucking hunt her down. <laughs> it's like, all right, we'll give you two years probation. Not even jail time, bro. What the fuck is going on, dog? And it's everywhere. Everywhere you go. It's the same shit. And they're always whining about criminal justice reform. We need to reform the system. You fucking kidding me? System is, we're winning, man. We are winning, winning. You heard me? Well, <laughs> I can get over this though, bro. A fine of $1,250 for a hidden rent. And this girl I was like... I was just if I was that, that that lady's family, bro, I would sue some fucking body, bro. I would sue the city. Like, what the fuck, dog? It's just shit is sad, man. This shit is this shit is, and it's like, look at her. You can tell she's evil. You know what I mean? Facts. Nah, yeah, dead ass. You can tell she's just a real pure piece of shit. So. And they don't they don't tell you like it was it was it random? Like did she like was she just like driving? Like was the lady crossing the street and then like you know it don't really go into the backstory behind it. 
Yeah, she hit her. And let me see if I can find the story. Death of Emma has changed the speed limit and pedestrian safety on University Avenue, where she was hit just down the street from East High School. And we are speaking oh, with she's Emma's a mother. High school student. Today, tonight at five, we will have what she has to say about the sentencing. Wow. Wow. That shit is crazy, man. I mean, to just like the judges, how do they sleep at? How do they how do they just do that? And then look the family in the eye. Like, that's just fucking crazy how you look the family in the eye. Tonight, we continue to follow the death of 14 year old Emma Cardenas. Jesus. Back in April, the East High School student was walking home when police say she was struck by a vehicle. The driver of that vehicle fled the scene, leaving Emma to wait for emergency services to respond. Emma was taken in the hospital where she later died from her injuries. If she would have fucking stopped and fucking called the police, they won't, that little girl could have been saved. 14 fucking years old. Two years probation, $1,200 fine. That vehicle fled the scene, leaving Emma to wait for emergency services to respond. Emma was taken to the hospital where she later died from her injuries. The sound is fucked up. Let me... No, no, it's, it's they sound. It's they sound. I feel good. Oh, I'm good. The sound is good. It's they shit. It's they shit. No. Tonight, we continue to follow the death of 14 year old Emma Cardenas. Back in April, the East High School student was walking home when police say she was struck by a vehicle. The driver of that vehicle fled the scene, leaving Emma to wait for emergency services to respond. Emma was taken to the hospital where she later died from her injuries. Local Fives Larissa Leon shares more about 38 year old Tara Flipping Price, who was arrested on the same day of Emma's death. Authorities believe she was behind the wheel of the car that eventually took Emma's life. Lewis, so what can you tell us? Stephanie, on June 9th, Tierra Flipping pled not guilty to the hit and run that killed Emma Cardenas. Fast track to a month later on July 14th, Price changed her plea to guilty in hopes to get a reduced sentence. If Flipping is charged with Emma's death, the minimum sentence is probation and a fine, slightly over $1,000. So they gave her the minimum sentence. Wow. Talk about a fucking slap on the wrist, bro. Death, the minimum sentence is probation and a fine, slightly over $1,000. The maximum sentence is five years in jail, along with a fine that's $10,000 or less. The maximum they could give that woman is five years. In the ten thousand dollars fine, and they gave her the minimum. The maximum is a joke. Giving her the maximum is not nearly enough, and they gave her the minimum. We spoke to Emma's family, who describes the way her life impacted those around her. She was a very kind person. She was very sweethearted. She wasn't like she was. Not Never a hater, none of that. She was super kind. I just hope that people, I just hope that people just become more nicer, become kinder, slow down, watch what you're doing, just become more aware. After Emma's death, Des Moines City Council added more safety precautions and location in which the hit and run occurred. Council members worked with Emma's family to ensure this doesn't happen again in the area of east side of Des Moines. Price is expected in court tomorrow where the judge will. Jesus Christ. Man, on that note, man, let's just go over the rumble now, man. I want to get into some of this stuff, man. Um, all right. Um, so it's rumble only now, man. Rumble only from now on. Guys, um, you want to go over the rumble now? And um you're gonna want to go over the rumble now, guys. Um and 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 um join us. Uh we got 84 people over there now. Um, I'm about to end this stream here on YouTube. If you want to continue to watch the stream, we're over on Rumble, Oc Nation News on Rumble. Link is in the description box. The link is in the description box. If you want to join us over on Rumble, make sure you hit the link. Link is somebody else. Deluxe just put the, the link in the chat. Um, Definitely come on over there. Um, 
because uh, I got some stuff I'm going to show you guys. <sighs> it's just going to knock your socks off, man. Um, my God. Um, yeah, so salute, everybody. Great show, YouTube. Um, make sure you guys hit the link in the description box for Rumble. Um, I'm out on YouTube.